everyone and welcome to our second Facebook Live. My name is Monica and I'm the Outreach and Education Coordinator for Safe House. Welcome everybody. Um, tonight we're going to um, take a little bit of a step back. Um, we've been talking about different ways um, to deal with domestic violence. We've been talking about domestic violence during COVID. But what I want to talk with you tonight is what is domestic violence? Um, as many of you know, as Outreach and Education Coordinator, I go out and I speak to um, agencies, organizations, and schools. And one of the most common definitions that I get is, oh, domestic violence is when he hits you and, you know, then he goes to jail. So that's one of the most common um, definitions I have. What I have for you here is a definition from the Nevada Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence. And they define domestic violence, intimate partner violence, as a pattern of abusive behavior in any relationship that is used by one individual to gain or maintain power and control over one another. Domestic violence and intimate personal violence can be physical, sexual, emotional, economic, or any behavior that is intimidating, manipulative, humiliating, isolation, frightening, terrorizing, coercion, threatening, blame, hurt, injured, or wound someone. Hi, Miss Julie. <laughs> so that is the definition from the Nevada Coalition to End Domestic and so Sexual Violence. What I would like, hi Bianca, I love you too, thank you. Um, what I would like to know is, what is your definition of domestic violence? I want everyone to kind of keep an open mind and think a little bit um, outside of the bubble as to what is domestic violence? What is considered domestic violence? Um, as you know, we have a certain um, way of thinking. Oh, domestic violence is physical. Yes, but there's so much more. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about tonight, not only um, about what we think of domestic violence, but what types of domestic violence. There are so many other types of domestic violence that we um, are not aware of that it is um, behavior that is not acceptable. It is behavior that is humiliating, coercion, um, threatening. Um, one of the things that our society is aware of is the physical violence, you know, sexual violence, um, there's a verbal, emotional, financial, digital, legal, um, there are so many different types of domestic violence that can affect the way someone thinks, someone acts, um, someone's decision making, behaviors. And domestic violence affects not only your physical being, but your mental being. And one of the things that we neglect, unfortunately, is our mental health. So what happens is, thank you guys for FaceTiming me, but I can't accept FaceTimes while I'm doing this. But if you can please just put your, um, your comments or your messages um, in the comment section, I'll be more than happy to um, go ahead and answer your questions. I appreciate you reaching out though. Um, I apologize for that. So back to, so one of the things that I wanted to address was what type, what are the different types of domestic violence? What can you tell me? Um, whether you know the full complete definition or not, that's okay, that's what we're here for. We're here to provide awareness, we're here to um, provide knowledge, and we're here to go ahead and provide um, our own way of keeping safe in our own way of not internalizing the behavior that is acted upon us, but internalizing the way that we can turn it around and redirect and empower ourselves. So um, as you know, especially with COVID, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the abusers are still in the home with the survivors and the victims. So what we want to do is we want to raise more and more awareness. We want to make sure that um, you know what is happening, and we want to make sure that you know the ways that you can go ahead and protect yourself. So with domestic violence, there are um, so many ways that someone may say, well, you know, he's not hitting me, or 
he's he's only allowing me to eat so much or you know he won't allow me to talk to my friends or he won't allow me to talk to my family um in domestic violence um situations and relationships there are certain patterns that um, can either escalate to physical violence or make worse than already is. So one of the things that I like to do when I um, speak to the community is red flags. I like to speak about red flags, just giving that knowledge like, okay, these are some things that you need to look for. Oh, but he's only doing it because he loves me or she's only doing it because she loves me. Yes, that's understandable. And there, you know, there are times that just because your husband says, oh, honey, let me hold her for you, that does not mean that the relationship is unhealthy or toxic. Um, but when it gets to the point of saying, okay, this is what you're going to eat. This is how much you're going to eat. This is how much you're going to weigh. This is how long you have to go to the bathroom. Um, then that's where it becomes a problem. And one of the things that I wanted to incorporate today um, was getting to understand and acknowledge the definition of domestic violence, to look at the different types of domestic violence, and also to acknowledge some of the signs that um, can be occurring. So if anyone has any questions, please, um, comments or concerns, let me know. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and keep going um, until then. So one of the things that I brought to your attention was the red flags. What do you look for? Um, myself as a survivor, I people always ask me like, well, didn't you see that coming or didn't you see that coming? And you know, when you're in that moment, no, um, I would say I, I he's just doing it because he loves me or he's trying to teach me how to be a better person or he's trying to teach me how to be American. That was my favorite definition. Um, but once um, I was out of the relationship and I started to reflect back through my healing journey and I was reflecting back and I'm, I was putting two and two together and everything started to fall into place and those were the behaviors that I did, was not aware of if someone only would have told me what to look for. So what I'm going to do here tonight is I'm going to tell you what to look for. One of the biggest things um, is Control. Yes, we all know what control means. Um, controlling what color your hair should be, what to wear. Um, can you go to work? Can you have a job? Are you allowed to talk to your friends? Um, can you go to McDonald's? Are you allowed to order the french fries? Little things like that. There are certain um, levels um, of control. When you start to feel like you have no control over your own life and the person is telling you, this is what you can eat, this is what you can't eat, or the person is telling you this is what you can wear, this is what you can't wear, you have to put these shoes on with this outfit, then you know that that's stepping over um, the boundaries and that you are no longer in control of yourself. Another red flag to look for is isolation. Isolation is very common, specifically in emotional abuse. Isolation is when the, your partner begins to say, okay, you know, um, you've spoken to your parents last week for five minutes, that's enough. Or, you know, you always go out with your friend, I really don't like her anymore, um, I don't think you should be hanging out with her, um, she's no good for you, or do you want to be, you know, a slut like her, or do you want to be a jerk like him? Um, beginning to put these negative thoughts into your mind and beginning to isolate you from your friends, your family, even going to the store, um, things like that. So when you start to feel as though there, you have nobody to turn to because you're not allowed to talk to anyone, isolation um, is the one of the very keys of um, beginning to emotionally and mentally control you. But another thing is, is it also impacts a lot of mental health. Um, that's when you start to feel alone and depression and um, you start to, to begin to question yourself and to question who you are. So one of the keys I, wanna, um, you, I want you to take from that is make sure that you always remind yourself who you are. Um, Self-care is big. 
and sometimes you know you can't you can't fix where you are or you're in that moment but what I want you to do is I want you to um, maintain control of yourself and don't lose control of yourself um, and we'll talk about some uh, ways to uh, regain empowerment and stuff in future um, sessions another way another red flag is um, asking for your password or wanting to say your phone um, one of the things that I was always um, told is oh babe let me see let me see the pictures of the kids on your phone or um, here let me let me show you how to do this update and you know of course you're gonna be like oh sure because you have nothing to hide but then that's one way of controlling or if you're here well, you know, um, oh, why don't you want to give me your password? Are you hiding something? And of course, you're thinking to yourself, I'm not hiding anything. So of course, you're going to give them your passcode. Another red flag, control. Another way of controlling you. Um, an, uh, there's red flags depending on what situation you're in. Um, you know, depending on your culture, depending on your ethnicity, uh, your religion. Sometimes, you know, you, you grow up in a, in a culture where it, it's okay for um, the man to be more dominant or it's okay for, you know, the woman to be in the kitchen and cook and things like that. Um, and, you know, not to say that if that's what you believe in, you know, that that's bad. It's when it starts to get a pattern of control. When it starts to become a pattern of, well, you don't know how to make your own decisions, so you're waiting for some, for him or her to make the decision for you because you're unsure of what you can and can't do. You're unsure of what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do. So that's one of the things that, um, you know, is it's hard to see at first, but if you sit back and think about it, and then you'll start to realize the patterns or, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. You'll start to realize the patterns and you'll start to see like, okay, is this healthy? Is this not healthy? When you're, when you're in a relationship that is unhealthy, you start to begin to doubt yourself. You start to begin to put yourself in a place where you can't make a decision. You can't even make a decision of what your favorite color is. You can't make a decision of what food you like because you're so codependent on what your what you want the partner um, to do for you. You're so codependent on waiting to see what your partner is that wants you to do so you think that that's okay. Um, another red flag is limiting your funds. So, but what I mean by limiting your funds is if you are a stay-at-home mom, then um, your partner allows you so much um, money either per week or per month so this is how much you have to go to the grocery store bring back your receipt make sure you bring back the change or if you do work and then you know your partner says okay well I need to see your check and this is how much you're allowed to spend but you have to account for every penny so economic and financial control is very common specifically when um, if the victim is the one who holds employment and the um, perpetrator is the one who does not have employment. Um, that is another way of controlling you, um, another way of making themselves feel better while you're the one actually doing the work because they don't want you to feel like you're moving forward or you're doing um, anything to better yourself. Another red flag um, is the fact that they will limit what you can watch on TV, um, the books that you can read, whether or not you can go on social media, um, whether or not you can engage in uh, Bible study groups or women's group or bowling team or anything that is extra activities outside of the home that does not involve your partner. So. Um, these are a few red flags. Um, we have um, we have a great training at Safe House that will um, go into more depth and more detail as to the different levels of red flags, um, healthy and unhealthy behaviors, um, which if you would like more information, I would love to provide that for you. 
um, just go ahead and reach out to me at uh, Monica R at safehousenv.org or you can always call the main office at 702-451-4203. Um, I'm always um, continuing education and uh, raising awareness throughout the community. But I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your, um, you know, what do you, what do you feel as far as um, red flags and when is it to go too far? Or is it domestic violence or is it just me? Um, you know, you start doubting yourself, you start feeling insecure. You know, that's, in, and that's, at times that's the way that your abuser wants you to feel. So it's completely normal. I don't want you to think that you're crazy or, you know, you're losing your mind. That is how the abuser wants you to feel. And it's only when you start regaining control of yourself or control of your own identity and emotions and decisions that they start to feel intimidated. So one of the things that I always like to say is, you know, always realize who you are and that you're worth it. Realize how strong you are inside and out. Um, don't let anyone steal your power or anyone steal your joy. Be aware and be mindful of the red flags. And, you know, as we moms say, you know, always go with the feeling in your tummy. Because if the feeling in your tummy doesn't feel right, nine times out of ten, it's not right. You know, um, maintain your own boundaries. If someone is overstepping your boundaries and making you feel uncomfortable, that's your body. That's your your um, energy telling you, hey, you know what, I'm not, I'm not feeling right. I need to get myself back in check. And one of the things that you want to do is you want to respect your body. You want to acknowledge your feelings. You want to acknowledge your emotions without going to yourself saying, oh my gosh, she's right. I am going crazy or she's right. I am losing it. I should be, you know, locked up in a mental institution. So I want you to take steps and I want you to acknowledge what is happening around you. If you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, there's always, um, you know, there's resources, organizations that can help you. Um, I understand sometimes it's really hard to contact um, someone for assistance, but we are always here. Um, we have so many people who are willing to help. But one of the things is, is remember to to keep safe and remain strong. Um, always listen to your energy, listen to your body. Your body will tell you, just like when you work out and your body's so sore, your body's telling you, hey, you know what, whatever it is that you're doing, it's working. Um, I can feel my abs or I can feel my legs. So same thing with the way someone treats you. When you feel uncomfortable or outside of your bubble, you know something is wrong. Listen to your body, listen to your energy, because you are your own best friend. And if you can't take care of yourself, nobody else is going to take care of you. Okay? So what I would like to do, since there's no questions and comments, and I've spoken for 19 minutes, um, if you're watching this movie, or excuse me, this uh, Facebook Live um, after recording, please go ahead and send me comments. Um, send me questions. I would love to speak with you. I'm always available. Um, I love what I do, and I love to raise awareness and provide education because I look at, I look back at my story, and I think to myself, you know, if I would have known this, if I would have known that. So I have made it a mission um, after I realized, you know, why did I survive? Why, how is it that I survived? And I look back and this is why I survived because all of the things that I learned through my healing journey, I'm here to um, teach you. I'm here to raise that awareness to you. So that way you don't have to end up like me when it's too late and not know what to do. You can go ahead and take the steps to start taking care of yourself from the beginning. I always use my story as an example because one, I believe in confidentiality, so I'm not breaking confidentiality when I talk about my story. And two, because nobody's an expert in your story except for you. 
So I can give you examples as to what I went through, you know, a foreigner coming to this country, um, you know, thinking one way and ending up totally different. So what I want to do is I want to take those lessons that I learned and turn them around and provide them for, you know, for you so that you can be aware and know what to look for um, and not have it be at the last minute like I did. But thankfully I'm here, I'm alive, and I'm able to um, tell you guys my story and to teach you guys about the signs and the red flags. Um, I am really enjoying this Facebook Live, and I um, believe that I think that this will be something good for not only the community um, and my friends out there in the social media world, but I also think it's helpful that you know um, men and women can come back and review these videos and either laugh because I look silly, or um, you know really think about what I said and you know keep it in the back of your mind. Uh, one of the things at Safe House, and if you watched our video from last week, um, is that we are truly a family, and we really do care about what we do, and um, we, you know, we are there as coworkers, but it's so much more. We all work together for the benefit of our clients, and that's what I do, and this is why I'm making a fool of myself tonight to, for you guys, because. I want to go ahead and share share the ways that we can all help each other, one another. Um, share our knowledge of what really is, um, you know, domestic violence. What is it to feel unsafe or uncertain? Um, what are the signs that I should be looking for? Because according to me, um, I think my partner is doing just fine. I mean, he may hit me once in a while, or she may throw, you know, a shoe at me once in a while, but. I think it's just because they're trying to teach me a lesson because I behave badly. Well, that's really not, you know, how it's supposed to be. Once in a while, depending on the situation, I mean, you know, if that makes you feel uncomfortable and you know that you're not joking around, then that's not okay. That's not a healthy relationship. And, you know, there are times maybe if you believe that you are in a safe place, maybe communicate with your partner and just let them know, look, you know what, that really didn't make me feel comfortable. Or if you believe that, you know, you're not in a safe place, you're not, you know, you're not feeling comfortable where you're at or how you're being treated in your relationship, then there's other ways, you know, to reach out and watching this video. Maybe a light bulb may come on and say, you know what, I remember watching this video a couple weeks ago and I'm starting to feel a little bit on edge and take it, you know, take it from there. So um, we've talked about a little bit about red flags. Um, next week we do have a guest speaker, um, dear friend and amazing speaker. She actually spoke at the um, coalition uh, for our training um, this past month. And she has an amazing story, an amazing journey, and I, um, I'm so excited that she accepted to share it with you guys um, because I really believe that it's important for um, others to, to really put a face to these stories and know that we're real. We're real. These are things that happen to us, and we want to share them in order to provide um, a healthier future healthier relationships, um, and of course, my favorite, empowerment. So I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, I appreciate your amazing support. I, um, I appreciate you watching us and following us on Facebook and all social media. Um, thank you to those who um, give me encouragement. I want to do a couple shout outs real quick before I go. So I want to thank um, our ED, Julie Proctor, who has been um, my strength. Um, she is the hugest support system, um, always encourages me and tells me I'm doing a great job, even though sometimes I feel like I failed you guys. Um, Beth Flory, who is our director of operations, and she is amazing, um, gives me great insight. I also want to thank all of my staff at Safe House, and I want to thank um, my fiance first and foremost for just being my rock and being my broccoli and putting up with me through my journey and giving me the encouragement to um, speak up and help others. 
So with that being said, um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and um, close out. Um, please reach out to me. Like I said, I would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts. Um, tune in with us uh, next week um, and look for the link. Uh, we're going to have Tiffany. Um, Tiffany is going to go ahead and speak with us um, about her journey and domestic violence and uh She's going to give a little insight as to uh, what she spoke about at the coalition. I don't want to give too much. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Julie and Bianca, for um, coming to support me tonight. And I hope that I can send you guys off with a little bit of thought and just know that, um, you know, we all have strength we all have power and we are amazing and we will get through this and thank you for joining with me and i hope that uh, i will see you again next week bye bye